Hey, what's up Reefers? Just finished breakfast with the beautiful G right here. Heading over to Offerly Acrylic right now to pick up the 17 gallon drop off tank. Super excited, so see you there. All right, so we made it to Incredible Corals. I actually got Sally right here. We're heading to a wedding. That's why we're dressed this way, but let's go pick up the tank first. All right, so I was gonna introduce the tank, but since the creator, the designer for this tank is right next to me, what am I, you know, what am I to say anything about it? So this is Adam from Artfully Acrylic. Adam, can you tell us a little bit about where Artfully Acrylic came from and you know, just kind of like the experience? Uh, hometown garage. You know, we just started at home building out of our garage and uh, got busy enough years ago. It was about five years ago, I guess or so. But, uh, we were running 12 to 16 week build times, I think, for, for tanks, which was getting a little absurd. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's where this, this shop was born. And then uh, it's been going ever since. Mm -hmm. Got about five hours of sleep in the last five years. This is good. That means you guys have a great <laughs> job. You know, it's always a great thing. We try. Yeah, we always try. So now, let's, since we have this tank right in front of us, this is beautiful. So I obviously there's a drop-off tank. Yeah. Where did you get this idea? This is, uh, this is the middle size of what we call a reef crest line, uh, drop-off tanks. Uh, we've always loved drop-offs. We did a drop-off years ago for a customer of ours. Uh, and ironically, is actually one of my business partners now. Okay. He wasn't back then, but you just customer back then. It was, uh, uh, I want to say it was 20, 36 by 24 by 24. It was pretty much oh. the uh, size of his tank. It was all rimless, built out of one inch acrylic, but it was a sumped version. You know, drop offs have been really popular uh, for years, but uh, you know, everybody just kind of, it's kind of like a Ferrari. You know, everybody yeah. just kind of looks at it and says, that's really nice. I want one, but they're expensive. You know, um, and part of it's because you got the tank and the engineering and the build of the tank is much more complex than a standard tank because you've got the drop section in the back of the tank and the way drop-offs have always had been done is you had to have a stand that was built to match it you know, that's true. because it had to match that drop at the shelf and the, the, the match there had to be perfect or you'd have structural issues uh, or complications with the tank down the line. Um, so this idea was born uh, sometime last year but we launched it in December so it's been almost a year ago we launched this guy. Uh, but we wanted to turn it into an all-in-one tank concept, something that could go on a, you know, just on a flat surface, it could go on a counter, or go on a desk, or it could go on any store-bought stand or a DIY-bought stand. You wouldn't have to have, you know, special carpentry skills to make a stand that matches the drop perfectly. It was something, and of course, mass producing it or having it a production model, something that, you know, with our CNC machine, we're able to recut and do again can help bring the cost down. That was kind of the idea to bring it down, bring the cost down, or it's something we can kind of put in anybody's home, you know, that wants it. Um, and that's great. I mean, I really appreciate it. Otherwise, drop off tank seems a little bit out of reach in terms of like. The they can. Yeah. Yeah, they can. And you, uh, you the other ones are great. And the drawer, yeah, that was a completely different. Uh, that one took a little bit to figure out how to get that incorporated into it. Because, of course, you can see the design with the open bottom design here. Doing is in part obviously what allows it to sit on top of a flat desk surface. So uh, we are actually going to be coming out with a sumpable, a sumpable version of this soon. Um, but the the design for the rear won't change much because we still need to have this chamber in the back, even if a sumpable version. So we'll consider that more like the overflow. Now we're going to be able to have it sitting on a table. Now you went, when you mentioned like sumpable, do you mean like it's drilled or? Yeah. Okay. I mean, when it's drilled and you got your stand pipes and something run, actually run down to a physical sump instead because of course everybody really likes that, you know, means of, uh, of having drop offs, but you know, the all in ones were the way to get it going on the market. And obviously, and obviously that was certainly the case. I mean, like I said, when we launched it in December, uh, it didn't take long for some of the bigs in the industry to start tagging along saying, hey, that's a great idea. <laughs> I wasn't going to mention it's, it. Uh, you know, but, uh, uh, but they did and yeah, yeah. because, well, it is a great idea. Yeah, you it know? is. And of course, they have the production capacity to produce a lot more. Yeah. You know, we're kind of, uh, we're more what I would say boutique mm -hmm. you know, almost like a, a boutique shop for aquariums because um, this is certainly a special tank. There's a lot of things incorporated into it that you're not going to find elsewhere. And of course, we were the first to put it out there, so we are the original innovators of the all-in-one. Uh, drop off tanks and of course we are also it's going back to what you were talking about here we are also of course very happy with the drawer 
uh, having this empty space here kind of perplexed or puzzled me for a bit. You know, do we leave it closed off in the design? Do we open it up? How do we use it? Don't really want wasted space. Yeah. Uh, so that's where the drawer was born uh, as an option. I mean, the tanks do look great even without the drawer. We have people put little lights and plants, you know, underneath there just to have a little extra accent or pop for something in their home. Again, it's made to add, add a nice design or a design flair and such to your home too. It's not just Cedar name is artfully acrylic, so it yes. is about it is about the art. It's about that artful presentation. I mean, we consider everything that we keep in our aquariums living art. You know, amazing creatures God has created. So, you know, we want to be able to give them something that is deserving of presenting them. You know? Yes, I just like um, how well thought out this is. For example, you have the sand trap. Mm -hmm. my, one of my worries, that was very important. Yeah, I was worried that okay, if I have sand up here, it's going to get all oh, <coughs> pushed down there. But this is this is nice. And also, I understand that you guys made the back compartment a little bit larger, so you can fit a good variety of product already out in market. Can you tell us a little bit about mm -hmm. what would go well in the back for the 17 gallons? This is what we have here. Uh huh. The all of our all-in-one lines, the Reef Crest series and the Signature series. Part part of their primary concept is having largest rear chamber, you know, on the market. It allows you to put more equipment back there because that's. This is one of the biggest things people complain about, right. you know, with a with, with an all-in-one tank is that they run out of space in the back or they don't have enough room for expandability, and that ends up kind of being that limiting factor. Uh, so we wanted our back chambers to be larger than people were accustomed to having and be able to hold more, than, hopefully as much or more than they would need. Obviously, there's always going to be some limitation here. I mean, when you've got a tank that's only 12 inches wide, right. you can only put but so much back there. Uh, but it's still designed to hold as much as possible within that 12 inches. Um, like for example, back here in this area here right behind the overflow, uh, this is where a skimmer can go. Uh, the rear chamber on this is designed where it'll, it'll hold the Tunsi 9004, okay. it'll hold the, um, the Innovative Marine Ghost midsize uh, skimmer. Both of those skimmers are designed for tanks that are about 40 gallons or and so. This 17, so. And this is 17. Okay. You know, our 35-gallon reef crest will hold the, the Tunzee 9012, it'll hold the innovative uh, full-size ghost skimmer, you know, which are rated for systems over 100 gallons. You know, that's not something you can usually fit into the back of, a dry, of an all-in-one yeah. system that size per volume. You know, so it's giving people the flexibility to pull a lot more of that uh, bio load out and keep that water clarity where they want it, yeah, you know, that. for whatever corals they're going to be keeping. I mean, we know SPS is, of course, difficult to keep. You need pristine water conditions. Not going to say SPS is really easy to keep at all in, in general in small right. systems, but having that extra capacity for a larger, more powerful sump is certainly going to aid those efforts. Yeah, I would love know, to try SPS go. down the road. Like, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Great. That's yeah. where the kind of where I think the sumpable versions are going to really shine. It's mm -hmm. going to give you the added volume. It's going to give you the ability to have reactors. Yeah. Uh, there are some small reactors that will also fit in addition to a skimmer in our 35 gallon model. Uh, pretty tough to get a reactor to go into this guy That's true. Yeah. Uh, on top of that, but at least you can get some dosing going on. The drawers are great for that because the drawers are designed to work as an ATO drawer. You know, you got the little quartz slot. This, this, this model here that you've got is actually one of our originals. Uh, nice. So the design's a little bit different on the drawers on the current models. It's just got two. Uh, finger holes here that also allow for cord passage and drawer opening. Uh, but that was the intent of this one here on the original model, be able to bring your cord out the side for your auto top off and be able to bring it up to the back to top off your tank. But you can still put your cow washer in here uh, for your top off so you're at least getting some uh, secondary supplementation that you can get in there. And I, I mean these are the little details I really noticed, like you have the cord slots here too. Mm -hmm. So you know you don't have to like go all the way out and I, I love that. I yeah. love all the little details. These are put there because obviously when the tanks have a, when customers order a tank with the lid, yeah. uh, that way you can have cords in the tank. I mean, the stock pumps that we put in these are designed to give the tank a pretty darn good turnover capacity, but much more than you would typically see. Uh, but you never know. Some people may still end up wanting to add a power head. Obviously, you know, having a 300 gallon hour pump. You know, it's 317 gallons an hour. That's a lot of water turnover yeah. in here. It can create creates some pretty darn good current in the system. The shape and design of the system actually does uh, promote a natural gyre-like motion uh, okay, so with the water flow. You know, as the water kicks forward off the return, it hits the front wall and it goes down because the distance here is so short. 
as that current continues and it just loops right back up and it just ends up coming in underneath the return. So you end up with quite a nice linear uh, gyro like flow throughout the system even with just this stock return pump. But obviously if you, you need a little more variability to your water flow or randomness to it, you're not, it's going to be hard to supplement that without a power head. Yeah. So, uh, but they certainly give it quite a bit for what it does. Yeah, this is, I think this is like so innovative. So innovative. So when I got that light that I wanted to find a tank to test it with, mm -hmm. coming right, this had uh, to be right, it. right after yeah. this got to be it. Yeah. It's got to be it. It's I guess cool like, light. We look forward to seeing yeah, how it works. I love it. Um, I guess like my only remaining concern is that I understand that acrylic do scratch. Mm -hmm. uh, for the longest time, I resisted putting acrylic and stick of glass simply because they're more scratch resistant. Now, last time I was here, you were kind of teaching us a little bit about how to cut out scratches, mm -hmm. at least I like scratches. Can you just go over it really, really quickly? Yeah. I mean, a little background since your viewers don't know, but uh, this tank, when you bought it from us, it was a, a used tank. Mm -hmm. This was this was actually the original uh, first Reef Crest 17 we had oh, built. Oh, okay, nice. Uh, when we launched the line of Sam, we built a Reef Crest 9 and a 17, and we had them both set up in the front of the store. Uh, then when we built the 35 for the gallon for the store model, we took those down. This one actually went to a customer of ours who partic participates in a lot of Aqua Beauty contests for freshwater planet tanks. Uh, and she took this around the uh, around the show circuit for a little bit and kind of showing what she could do with it on the freshwater side. You know, I'm sure if you've seen the you know, King of DIY I saw and his that. videos, it was, it's impressive. Uh, it looks you can see where he was at, uh, the big fish deal you yeah. know, that they did last year for Capital Cichlids. Um, she had this there and had that set up. And it was cool to see what she could do with a freshwater tank. But obviously when she's taking this thing and she's putting rock in it and plants in it and sand and setting it all up at a show and then having to take all this stuff back out and take it back home and set it back up and let it grow out again a little bit until she's ready for the next show. Really in those cases you're going to present a lot more scratch opportunity course, yeah. than you would your typical home tank that gets set up and stays there. Right. So actually this tank had a number of scratches in it when you came here. I mean it wasn't bad. It was if it was filled with water you probably wouldn't see it. but. There were certainly a lot of scratches, and you know you plan on doing a lot of photography and videography with it, so you wanted to make sure it looked nice. Right. So you had us go ahead and refurbish the tank. The tank wasn't rebuilt. It's not brand new. It's been refurbished and refinished. first thing you said when you walked in was, hey, it looks like a brand new yeah, tank. Yeah, this looks like a brand new tank. It's that's, really that's impressive. One of the great things that I like to point out about acrylics is that, yeah, it's easier to scratch than glass, but both of them are very scratchable. And anybody who's been in this hobby a long time knows that glass can get scratched, yes. does get scratched, oh, but, my tank is all scratched but when it does, that's it. You can't do anything about it. You can't fix the scratches in that tank. You know, this one had hundreds of small little scratches in it, uh, but with just a few hours of refurbished work and buffing and polishing, everything comes out and the panels are all restored to new. So not something you'd ever be able to do with the glass. Yeah, this, this is fantastic. And you uh, understand that even when there's water in the tank, you can still buff things up. You don't have to like drain the entire tank, mm -hmm. which is a pretty big deal. That is a pretty big deal. And it's a big misconception that a lot of people get uh, misguided on. Because I know I tell a lot of people, well, you can repair the scratches in a curl. Like, yeah, I know. But then I have to take all my livestock exactly. out. And it's like, well, no, 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 you don't. Yeah. You know, unless you've got a fish in there that's going to repetitively attack you and put you in harm's way right. while you're repairing it. Yeah, yeah that okay. you might need to take out. But otherwise, uh, for internal scratches, I mean, uh, sandpaper and what they call micro mesh. Micro mesh is just super fine levels of sandpaper. You know, most people are used to seeing sandpaper and you know, 1,500 or 2,000 grit, uh, which is fine. I mean, even a tank that has water in it, if you buff it, a scratch out all the way out to 2,000 grit, you're not going to see the scratch anymore whatsoever. It's going to look great when it filled. You wouldn't notice the repair until you would drain that tank. Then you'd see a little haziness in that area, a little cloudiness from the repair. And just because the repair could have been taken a little bit further, but it wasn't. It could be taken further with micro mesh. And micro mesh goes all the way up to 15,000 grit, you know, which is full optical clarity like you have on your glasses where might you would you'd have to look under a microscope to see any fine level of microabrasion still left over from that. And in that case, yeah, of course when it's dry, it's still gonna look great if yeah. you go that far with it. Fifteen thousand is too far. Gotcha. But this looks beautiful. Four to six thousand is probably sufficient for most people with internal repairs. But I mean even a simple, you know, two or three inch long kind of light to medium scratch 
you know, fixing it from the inside of the tank no would problem. probably take you 10 to 15 minutes oh, that's super quick. to fix that one scratch. What, the reason it took several hours, obviously, to redo this whole tank is because you've got scratches kind of throughout, inside and out, and it's hard to tell one whether they're inside or outside when you've got a, not quite a number of them. Right. Uh, and two, it's just easier to, re to do the entire surface. So we're actually sanding and buffing out the entire surface to a certain level and then bringing the optical optical clarity back out from there. It makes it take a little longer, but certainly gives you a much nicer uh, turnaround effect. Yeah, I really appreciate it. It's fantastic. I think like last bit of information a lot of people may be interested in is how much it costs and what are the options to get with the tank. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously this is a 17 gallon part. Uh, how much do you normally sell it for? Uh, the 17 gallons are 399. Okay, that's without the drawer. <clears throat> that's without the drawer. We did try to set them, you know, we didn't want to put too much accessorization exactly. in its stocks. We want to be able to keep you know that base price low enough to where uh, it's comfortable for most. You know, someone can't afford the whole package, but they want the lid and they want the drawer. Of course, they can add on those features later mm -hmm. uh, if they choose, but still get the tank in the house now. And, you know, right. start getting it set up. So that's what you want to do. So the tank starts at three ninety nine, but then we have the optional lid, uh, our clear view lids. You know, you see there's a couple of them over there for different tanks, but uh, our clear view lids have kind of have, legitimately taken on a, a, a life of their own, yeah. you know, and kind of taken over the market. Uh, but they were originally designed for the Reef Crest series uh, of tanks, and it was simply because of the, the polished edge that we have on here. You know, we wanted a, a lid that could go on there and not hide hmm. that polished edge uh, that you have on a rimless tank. So it does not sit on top, it's kind of like... Yep, it's, yeah. it's slightly, uh, re slightly recessed uh, in the tank. I don't have a new clear view lid for this tank. I have the old original one which is pretty sad and dismal looking. So, <laughs> That's all right. Because uh, its design was totally different. It didn't have the tabs that maintain the view of the rimless tank. It actually had you know, full coverage there with the lip that gotcha. sat on it, which really wasn't uh, conducive and it was kind of missing that little bit of flare that it needed with the tabs that the clear view lids have. Which we can show you what one of those look like with the Recrest 35 up front. Uh, that you can see. That's actually one big thing that um, Affiliate Acrylic does too. A lot of people order these kind of lids from them for their, for their own tank. Even though uh, they did not order a tank from Affiliate Acrylic, they can create um, custom lids. And it's, they've been super popular. Very much. <laughs> and how much does that cost if people want to order those custom lids from you guys? Uh, they vary based upon the size of the tank they're ordering, but they're between 40 and $70 for, okay. for the Reef Crest line. Uh, obviously our lids for other tanks you know, range anywhere from a hundred dollars, and we've done. We actually did a twelve hundred dollar lid a couple of a couple That's of weeks big ago. Tank, yeah. uh, big tank, but it was just a really fancy, complicated lid for a custom so custom cut. Elos uh, tank we built. That one actually didn't have any tabs on it. That oh, was okay. actually built with mitered edges that fit inside of a oh, matching wow. miter bevel right. for the Eurobrace. So it was very. It was a challenge, but it was fun. Uh, but the lids are the one option, and of course the drawers are the other option. Depends on obviously the size of the tank that you're getting, uh, how much those run. But again, they're usually in that forty to seventy dollar range uh, for the drawers between those. When I say this, the the auto top off drawer on the Reef Crest 17 holds kind of about five gallons okay. uh, of water, which is a decent amount. You wouldn't want any more than that, you know, on a system like this. Remember, your ATO shouldn't be oversized to where if your pump malfunctions or your sensor malfunctions and it dumps everything into the tank, yeah. you don't want it to completely dilute the salinity too much to where it's going to have a severely negative impact on your livestock. Uh, I mean, five gallons of fresh water going into the yeah, that's that salt water system would not be very good, yeah. but uh, but you also don't have to fill the drawers all the way to the top either. Right. you got to leave a little bit, a little bit of space so that you can slide them in and out. And even if someone's not going to use an auto top off, or you got a separate auto top off, kind of set up behind your system and want to use it that way, uh, the drawers still function great, obviously, for dry storage. Absolutely. You know, probably one of the more popular stand types for these tanks is, you know, the pedestal style stands that don't really have any doors, they don't really have any storage space underneath, you know, they kind of maintain that nice clean line, modern, contemporary look. And the drawers still will give you the option to have some storage there with it, even if you don't incorporate that in. I like that. And in terms of stand, you guys don't sell a custom stand. It's more like this is pretty much a standard size combination, so you can just go out and buy any stand that will fit the tank. Right? We do offer stands, you know, but our but our shop is only but 
so big. Um, so when it when it comes to changing gears to from building acrylic to building stands, yeah. you know, scheduling is a challenge sometimes. So usually the stands that we're going to build are going to be for our larger, you know, our larger custom tank gotcha. builds, either you know either steel or, yeah. or, or plywood CNC cut uh, stands that are built and laminated and a high grade for those. Um, comes to tanks like this, I mean the 9 and the 17 gallon for the most part were pretty much expected and designed to where they're going to fit on most counters or desks um, uh, at your home or at your office so they don't really need a stand and that was kind of part of the thing. But if you do, I mean Petco, PetSmart, they sell the, the standard you know, glass 10 and 20 gallon long stands, you know, they're really cheap, I mean, yeah. like 30, 40 bucks, 60 bucks at the top end, you know, for some of these ones, let's get a stand on them super cheap you know for a really nice tank that it's already going to have the right footprint for it uh, the 35 gallon that's a little different yeah you know, since right. it's you know 30 by 18 uh as its footprint and not nearly as many obviously uh, common off the shelf cookie cutter stands that that's going to work with so we get more requests for custom stand builds for the 35 gallon than we ever would for the 9 or 17. That makes sense. And what is the dimension for the 17? Just it's it's 24 long, that's right, and 12, uh, and then it's uh, 15 tall. Okay, 15 tall. Like cool. All right, uh, thank you for all the information and for your help at getting this tank back to the pristine uh, condition and lots of great information. Actually, it's 18. 18, 18 tall. would be the 9. Yeah. Okay, and I'll get all the information down in the video description below. And again, Affiliate Acrylic, they've been doing a lot of innovative stuff. They have some like secret project brewing. So I'll say follow them on the Facebook page. Any news, I guess, you guys will update your Facebook. Mm -hmm. And also right next door is Incredible Corals. I've done a video uh, about them like, two or three weeks ago, and I have the link up there somewhere too. So thanks again, Adam. My pleasure. I'm going to steal this tank and run away now. It's all yours. <laughs> it's all yours. Going home so excited. Oh, wait, we have a wedding to go to. We're not going home yet. <laughs>